one else wants to talk about it, so I'll do it. First of all, animation was good. Only thing I had a little gripe with was the clipping within the character model of Crash, since the Twin Sanity one in particular didn't age that well. Still, cool animation. Secondly, what the fuck? Why is Crash running? He can dig underground to avoid the fireballs, then just counter Spyro in the air after using the rocket jump. Where are those? Why is the generic droid void here when he has a bazooka that shoots the same thing and he can carry while on foot? I actually don't mind the helicopter pack, but why a last minute choice for the fight? And since Crash can breathe in space, why not just use the jet pack from Crash 2 which is more optimal? Why is Mojo listed on here when he clearly doesn't use it in this fight? Where's the Triple Dragon? Where's the Norris Roundhouse? Where's the Mutants? Hold up. Now, I know there's gonna be someone out there telling me that a Mutant or Titan would require outside help, but look at the Jack and Ratchet death battle. They clearly had no problem using Daxter and Clank for help, and Aku Aku appeared out of nowhere protecting Crash from Spiral's flamethrower. Another thing, too, Crash can just put his Mutants in his pocket. Legit, they're his Pokemon, practically. He owns them after possessing them. All he'd have to do is whip out the ratsicle to free Spyro and then smash him into pieces, assuming that the execution is done right and it's done at the end. Why was Aku Aku whipped out at the end but not using invincibility to fall through the Aether Breath freely? Invincibility is invincibility, bruh. You'll probably say Crash needs to smash three crates to get the invincibility, however that's just for gameplay purposes in the games. Aku Aku has the free will of using it whenever and wherever. He's a magical mask. Need I say more? All they did was make Crash spin twice, use two of the most underwhelming arsenal, and Aku Aku was just there to be there without using invincibility once, so it's completely fine to use the Legend Spyro against Crash, who only uses shit from the Wrath of Cortex and nothing after that, are you serious? Was Twin Sanity's Mecha Bandicoot not in mind at all? Mentioning Crash's combat was pointless since the dude never used it in battle, the execution of this was underwhelming and it really seems like they didn't care so they just whipped out Dark Spyro and didn't use Aku Aku correctly and just called it a day. It's a real shame that no one can even see the chunk of things that they missed for Crash Bandicoot. You wanna know what else Crash could have done? Well guess what Spyro has that Crash doesn't? A neck. Just snap it and it'd be done and over with. Look, all I'm saying is that they could have been a lot more creative and the execution could have been done so much more better. What I would suggest is to go watch the Rewind Rumble of Crash Bandicoot vs. Spiral the Dragon. The link to that video will be in the description because not only is it more creative, but it's also longer and it has a lot more thought put into it. So yeah, go look at it. Nobody messes with me, pal. No one even messed with you. Crash was minding his business, then your stupid Sparks buddy got in his face because no one likes bugs, and then he died. You just pulled up at a spot, you idiot.